My name's uh, David Kenyon and I'm based up in Scotland at SASA, which stands for Science and Agriculture um, Advice for Scottish Agriculture, and that's part of the Scottish Government. Um, my role there is as Head of uh, Diagnostics, Wildlife and Molecular Biology, none of which obviously suggests that I would have anything to do with uh, biofumigation at all. Uh, but my background is as a plant pathologist. The work I was talking about was work from uh, one of my PhD students and that was on looking at the specific ITCs, which is the isocyanates, which is one of the very active compounds produced by biofumigant crops against three different uh, soil-borne diseases of potatoes. So they cause the diseases of uh, black scurf, silver scurf and black dot. And these are sort of blemish diseases uh, that cause rejection um, of farmers' crops. So they, they're, they're quite valuable. They, they, they don't damage the potato, you know, so you can peel them off and things. But uh, people don't like buying potatoes with them on. So, um, so they're quite important. Uh, the other aspect of them is that uh, there's no commercial control. So at the moment, control's based around a whole range of things like long rotations, making sure you see tubers when they go into the ground to clean of disease. So there's no nice cure-all for farmers to use. So they're, they're difficult to control and they tend to build up over time. So uh, farmers get fields which have these problems and you know every time they crop those fields, they know they're gonna have issues. So they're, they're nice targets to work with. So um, what we found was that each disease is, is affected by different ITCs. So it, it, it's quite important to know what your target is and then um, look at which of the brassica uh, crops you're going to use as a biofumigant so it provides the right uh, product if you like to control that specific disease. But you, there's no cure-all, there's not one crop that's going to do all the diseases. So it, that, that's what I was presenting. Um, Fiona, the student who did that work, was also presenting here and she was uh, presenting the other side of the story which was actually uh, showing what ITCs are produced by which biofumigant crops. So she's done the analysis that matches up with that. Um, my other area of uh, interest with biofumigants is uh, potato cyst nematode control. And that's uh, another soil-borne um, problem of potatoes. And that's potato cyst nematode. And I have another student uh, working on that. And again, a similar approach, which of the ITCs are going to be effective against that. I think there's lots of promise there. I think we're at a, a stage though where it, it, it's very difficult to predict how it's going to be up take, uh, taken up by farmers. I think there's good slots for it to fit into people's rotations, but I think unfortunately the problem with it is is that um, we haven't got the agronomy knowledge there. So people really, when they're developing these and trying them, as farmers do, I mean farmers are very good about trying new things and having a play. But because the agronomy support and knowledge isn't there, when they try these things, if they're not getting a good crop, and you know, ultimately what people need to do is grow a really good crop of the biofumigant so it has the best chance of working, all too often they're not getting establishment, they're not getting good crop growth, and therefore they're just not getting the work. And that first experience is so important with these sorts of novel technologies. So I, I think in some extent, we're at, we're at that sort of tipping point and what we need to do is, is give enough advice to farmers that they're getting a good experience. I think there's plenty of work being shown at this conference that there's good effects there but also there's been plenty of talks where people have sort of said well it didn't work and when you unpick what they were telling you you can see why there's you know it, it, they didn't get the establishment they didn't get the biomass you know, the way they've handled the crops ha has meant that they've not preserved um, the active components. But all of these things are things that are happening to farmers. So I, I think we need to be a lot better in, in terms of how we provide that advice.